Welcome to the Girl on Top Shallon XO podcast. I'm your host, Shallon Lester, and you might know me from my YouTube channel, where I analyze celeb relationships and scandals for the lessons we can take into our own lives. But here on the podcast, I answer the best questions you submitted over the past week. Gotta love quandary? Head to my website, shallonlester.com, to get connected, and also shop my merch and take some fun quizzes. Be sure to rate and review this podcast if you like it, and follow me on Instagram at ShallonXO, and find me on YouTube for four new videos a week. Welcome back to the podcast, Shalloners. All right, we're going to get our mind right, we're going to get into the groove, and we're going to wake the mighty women. So let's just... And out through our mouth. And we're going to repeat a mantra this time. This too shall pass. And it sounds simple, right? Oh, this too shall pass. Oh, I know that. Would you read that on a sign at TJ Maxx? No. This has been such a difficult time for us in quarantine. Keep breathing into the nose, out through the mouth as I say this. And it's when we're in the middle of a storm, whether it's an emotional storm, it's a logistical storm like this corona thing, or it's an actual storm, you don't know which way it's moving. You don't have the benefit of objectivity. You don't have that bird's eye view and you just feel like, oh my God, I'm in the middle of this. What if this never ends? What if, I mean, who am I going to be on the other side of this? What is my life going to look like? And that's true in a regular storm, right? What kind of damage is going to be done? Right now I'm in it and this seems bad, but maybe afterwards it's going to be worse. It's just like an endless spiral of anxieties. So today we're going to talk about some issues you guys are having in quarantine with family, with friends, with boyfriends, just with yourself. And we've been doing some quarantine themed podcasts for the last few weeks because, I mean, fucking look at this situation. We've been dealing with this for the last few weeks. So the motto this week is, this too shall pass. There's a phrase, it did not come to pass. No, wait, (laughs) it did not come to stay. It came to pass. You know, like you hear stories like, and so it came to pass that Gandalf descended the mountain. You know, it's because the first half of that phrase is, it did not come to stay. It came to pass. And that just gives me a lot of comfort. Maybe I did read it on a sign at TJ Maxx. Who knows? Our first question is from Rachel. And oh boy, I feel like some of you guys might be identifying with this. She said, this question is about my mom. She and I have always been close, and we still are. She had me when she was 25 years old, so her and I are kind of like sisters. However, we are very different in character, and we don't see eye to eye on a lot of things. As of recently, we've been fighting a lot. I'm stuck with her in quarantine, so everything's really amplified. How do I deal with a mom who is trying to change me? She went as far as to make a list of 11 things that I needed to change. Please help. Oh my God. I'm just, I'm laughing because it's so crazy. It's so like crazy making. Like if you're with your parents, I'm with my family right now. It's like you just regress. I walk through the door in a normal visit with my family and I am 15 years old again. I don't want to clean out the lint thing in the dryer. Can't you do it? I'll wind the hose up later. Gosh. It's like I'm just right back to my teenage years. And certainly all of us being stuck with our family is amplifying that because first of all, we can't leave. And second of all, we do kind of feel like children again because we're frightened. And like I, like I was saying, you might know that you're going to weather this storm. You might th- think or know or whatever, or be very confident you're not going to get coronavirus. I am confident you're not going to get it either. But you might not know what the world's going to look like after this. A lot of messages lately have been like, how do I date after this? I forget. I don't know how to interact with boys. I feel like all my progress with dudes is just like ebbed away. So that kind of keeps us in this childlike self. Mama, I don't know what's going to happen. Daddy, you got to come and fix this for me. You know, and even if we're not with our actual parents, we're, a lot of us are looking to religion. Heavenly Father, come fix this for me. Great Mother, come and fix this for me. What do I do? How do I get out of this? How do I navigate this? So if we're stuck with actual parents, I mean, we just double down on that. And those parent-child roles are really, really entrenched. They spring back to life. And for good reasons, like your parents want to take care of you. You want to be taken care of. But if you find yourself back with your parents, whereas maybe heretofore you have been a more autonomous adult, you've been away at school, you live in your own apartment, even just like 
you're a teenager and you're used to going where you want and doing what you want and seeing the people you want. And it's tough. So if that's how you're feeling, just know that you are not alone. I am a full grown adult and I feel like this. Okay. It's just kind of a byproduct of being with your family. But holy shit, a list of 11 things. (laughs) I mean, okay. What a fun list that probably was to read. So yeah, I know what you mean about being close like sisters. My mom and I are too, and we're quarantined together. And it's like she forgets I am that autonomous adult 365 days a year. I don't blow up my kitchen. I know how to use a microwave. I know how to cook an egg. I don't fall into open manhole covers. I don't eat shards of broken glass. I don't fall into the subway tracks. I manage to clean myself and feed myself. I am an adult. Please back off of me. It's hard. But therein lies the tension between all parents and kids. They still see us just as that. Kids. And we're not. But all parents want for us truly is to be happy and safe. So try to look at that list. And if you're going through this, any sort of list real or not, whether it's written on a big ass whiteboard she ordered off of Amazon, it's now sitting in the living room, or it's just this constant stream of feedback. Try to look at it through that filter. Ask yourself, which I know is annoying, how would this make my mom think that I'm happy and safe? Right? Maybe one of those things on the list was, you need to work out, you need to lose weight, or something physical and health related, okay? To her, that might mean safety but also emotional safety. Like, oh, okay, if you're fit, you're going to feel better and you're going to feel more confident. So you know what I mean? Or maybe it's, you need to lose weight, otherwise no man is going to marry you. I've heard this from a lot of a lot of girls lately, actually. Um, and it's like, again, that goes back to safety. Because if you're married, you're safe, there is someone looking out for you, you have financial security, you are not this exposed woman in the world. And the way you get there, sweetheart, is by dieting. And it's like, No, mom, no. The way I get there is through my autonomous independence, through being financially independent on my own, you know, on and on and on. It's really not down to my thighs. That that has never kept a woman safe from harm in life, ever. Ah, Yo, don't you wish it would? Don't you wish that's all it took? It's like, okay, if we were all just 115 pounds, nothing bad would ever befall us again. But that is not the way it is. I've been 115 pounds. I was actually, it was some of the worst times in my life. I've been 155 pounds and I was happier. You know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't really do anything. So look at things through that lens of happy and safe, right? And then approach her from that standpoint, right? Because maybe there's a line of logic you're not seeing, understandably, because like you feel attacked, but, and this is like an emotional thing to hear. It's, very emotional to get feedback and criticism from our parents. A stranger could say it to you. Your best friend could say it to you. You wouldn't take it the way you do when your mom says it to you, you know, but try to get a sense of her mindset in what's fueling this feedback and then approach her from that standpoint. This is the script. Mom, I feel like the reason you told me to work out is because you want me to be happy and safe. And I know you want that for me overall, but number one, I am both of those things because I do X, Y, and Z in my life and list those things. I save my money. I connect with friends. I go to church, whatever it is that truly makes you feel happy and safe in your life. And number two, mom, I know all this comes from a good place, but please ask yourself how you would feel maybe like broken and weird and attacked and deficient and unlovable. If I gave you this list, because we could all give people a list but we don't because it's hurtful. And this list, honestly, it was really, really hurtful. So if you want me to be happy and safe, I'd appreciate you approaching it from that standpoint. Because to me, this list feels like a list of reasons why I'm unlovable and why I'm just broken as a person. And for my mom to potentially think that about me is really damaging and painful for me. You know, let her know that you're open to feedback, but come at it from a place of, I feel not you're a bitch for writing this list. Because girl, you're going to get a list of 12 things tomorrow. And that number 12 is going to be, don't sass your mama. So approach it from a place, not of criticism or telling, but rather collaboration, you know? And I'm not saying this is going to fix it, but at least you can know, hey, I was the hero here. Hey, I took the high road. I did the smart emotional thing. 
And sometimes all you can do is all you can do. But I truly think that that's going to get you a lot farther with your parental relationships right now, rather than just internalizing criticism and feeling like, oh my God, I am broken. This is true. No. Sit and make a list of the things you know to be true about yourself. Even if it's only three things. I know my friends love me. I know I go to church and I know I make my bed every day. What, you know, whatever it is, just start there. And then every day add another thing. I know that I help people who are in need. I know that I stand up for injustice. I know that I vote to protect people who need my help. And then we start to become a little bit more bulletproof. Then when we hear these criticisms, even from the people who mean the most to us, we have empirical evidence to counteract something that's hurtful. This next question is from Marie. And oh boy, it's another one about family. She said, this semester I've been growing a lot and making so much progress on myself. But now that I'm home, quarantined with my toxic family, I just feel like all of that has stopped. My dad is emotionally and financially abusive to my mom, but she's not going to leave. She's very religious. Plus, she's still raising my siblings. I tried to intervene in a fight one time, and it just did not help. I've also tried to cope by refusing to care. Like, you know what? Okay, it's her choice. She's not standing up for herself, but I love her, and I cannot stand to see her hurt and belittled. The fighting in this house just kills my focus and my motivation for school and for work. And I'm also still financially dependent on these people. So how do I grow and be productive and stay sane while I'm still stuck here? Oh, brother. I just, I feel like I read these questions and I just sigh so deeply because I just feel you so deeply. And it's, you know, like we were saying, when does this storm pass? And I think something that a lot of us are grappling with is the lack of freedom of movement. One of my best friends, she's like, you know what I've realized? I'm a civil libertarian. I don't believe that you should be able to tell me where I can and can't go. I'm like, well, yeah, dude, they can. I mean, if you want to live out in a place with no paved roads and no 911 access, sure. But it's true. It's like, it's one thing to be like, okay, you guys have to stay in your house. There's a fire or a hurricane or locust or whatever. But then it's like, there's always someone, some place you can escape to, right? I could get on a plane and I could go to Puerto Rico. I could go to Barcelona. I could go to California. I could go wherever I wanted to. And that's, that's typically how I deal with things. I'm a runner. I run from things I don't like. And you can't do that now. And I know you guys are a lot like that. And, and maybe you're not getting on a plane. Maybe you're going and seeing your friend. You're going and seeing your boyfriend. Shit, you're just going out for a run around the neighborhood. And you're a literal runner. So impressive. And that's not available anymore. And on not only on a micro level, we can't leave. On a macro level, all of humanity is feeling like this. So it's a lot of existential things. Like, hey, it's not just that I can't leave because there's a storm. It's I can't leave because I might get a disease and die. That's a, lo- that's a lot. That's heavy. That's a lot to carry. So everything we're feeling, and I talked about this in a recent video, is compounded by that existential dread. That question of truly life and death that most of us don't think about all the time. And nor should we. Because look what happens when we do. I mean, it's the anxiety, it's the terror, it's the fear-based decisions. We can't live like that. And that, I think, is what religion really brings into our life. And I, I mean, I'm not, this isn't like a pitch for Christianity or something, but I get why people are religious. It's like, hey, if it's my time, it's my time. I'm going home to be with Buddha. I'm going home to be with Jesus. I'm going, I'm being reincarnated. I'm going to the great spirit in the sky. That gives us this sense of, you know what? I don't got to stress about this. Somebody else is taking care of it. The number of my days God will fulfill. And I'm just going to keep on living. And if it's my time, it's my time. So I can understand why people are getting a bit more religious during this time. And why people are religious to begin with. You know, and if that brings someone peace, man, go for it. We got we to gotta grab peace where we can find it. But I'm off topic, as usual. Okay, look. I have been getting so many questions like this, like I said earlier, where people are, feel, they feel like they're totally devolving in quarantine and feeling like they're just regressing being home with family. I hear this so much. I hear this so much. I, all of my progress is going away, whether it's, hey, I used to work out every day and now I don't, or I used to feel really confident about myself and now I'm around my dad and he tells me that I have no value, all this stuff. Look, no one can stop your progress besides you. This I know as fact. 
the work you've done in yourself, it hasn't gone anywhere. It's simply being challenged. And hey, that's what life is. No creation, whether it's an emotional creation inside of ourselves or like an actual piece of art or whatever, is immune to challenges. There will be people or situations who test you. And that is the real test, isn't it? You know, but that test is going to prove to yourself how far you really have come. They're not going to be like, oh, well, I guess we'll just go back to being who I was last year, just shitty and fragmented because I was tested. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. You're going to double down and you're going to draw from the strength you created. You created this. You created this strength inside of you. So why do you think you've maxed out on the strength you can create? It's an endless well that you can draw from. And bringing water up out of a well is laborious. You got to pump it. And have you ever watched it? It's like crazy. It's this whole weird pumping action. But you know what? It's not supposed to be super easy. It's supposed to be difficult because then it's supposed to give us pride. No one gave you this development. You gave it to yourself and therefore no one can take it away from you. Do you know what the strongest tree is? It's going to surprise you. You may think it's like an oak or a pine or some huge imposing redwood or something. That's what I thought. It's a palm tree. They can withstand hurricanes and they bend over almost completely flat to the ground and then they come back up again. They can stay flat like that for hours during and after a storm. Oaks and pines, they they can't. They get their ass handed to them by a storm. And when a palm is bent... You'd think, okay, well, it's getting weaker. It's tearing and bend me in half like that shit. I'm not getting back up. But no, the fibers are getting stronger. Kind of like how when you work out, you know how you build muscle is that the fibers are being microscopically torn down and then they rebuild and that's how your muscle gets bigger, right? It fuses back together stronger and tougher. You are a palm. You are bent, but you are getting stronger. And here's how you get stronger, okay? You work on that emotional boundary. No, you can't get out of this house. No, you can't fix this relationship with your parents. But you can keep your peace. Meditation apps, prayer, needlepoint, vision boards, walks around the block. Whatever you can do to sow those seeds of peace. Just this flicker of internal sunlight that you can just be like, okay, I feel it. And now I'm going to sit here for a few minutes. I'm going to try and feel it more. And just feel it a little bit more. And I'm going to picture that flicker of sunlight radiating throughout my body right? You can be that palm for your family. And true, you can't get your mom out of there, but you can give her a shoulder and represent peace and strength for her. We don't ever really think that our parents are inspired by us or look to us for wisdom, but they do. Gift her an audiobook on self-esteem that might help. Like, go on Psychology Today. They have wonderful recommendations. I'm reading a book called, literally, Self-Esteem by Matthew McKay. Catchy title, bro. But it's incredibly, incredibly helpful. And encourage her to go on daily walks and listen to the book. Do the dishes. Fold the laundry. Take things off her plate. You know? Of course she doesn't feel like she can leave. She's got too much shit to do. So maybe if you take some of those logistical things away from her that she no longer has to worry about, she'll have the emotional bandwidth to decide how she feels about a situation. And as for your dad, keep him distracted. Order him a book. Or a project he might want. Set up a Zoom call with his high school buddies. Whatever he might be into, right? This quarantine is eroding people's sense of control. Like I said, both both over their actual physical freedom and over just life at large. Because a virus is an unseen enemy that we can't really kill. And we're used to being able to see our enemies, right? That is a recipe for abuse and tension. So help people in your family regain that sense of self-control. But also give it to yourself. Truly This is your palm tree test. And tell yourself, you know, you can survive it. If you tell yourself you can't survive it, that you're going to devolve, that you're going to feel like this forever, no, you won't. I promise. You are bent. You are not broken. So keeping with our unintended theme of parents and also sort of religion, we're going to talk to Ellen today. Now, she said, My father recently had a health scare and joined an extremist version of the Catholic Church called Feeneyism. I've never heard of that, but why would I have? I don't know most things. Since then, he has become more radical in his views, culminating in him telling me I will be damned to hell. What fun. He's now doing things like secretly baptizing my niece. My brother doesn't know. He doesn't think that he's done anything wrong and that he has any kind of problem at all. And now I'm frosty towards him because how could I not be? How do you become neutral towards someone whose beliefs and behavior you find repugnant when you have to see them on a regular basis? He and my mom are kind of a package deal, and I don't want to give her up. 
man, this is a tough situation. Like extremist religion, it's On one hand, it's like you look at it and you're like, why? Why be so extreme? But then what what we're going through now with, like I was saying, this existential crisis about the virus, like it makes more sense. We want an extreme answer to what we perceive to be an extreme problem that we extremely cannot solve ourselves. So like, I get it. What I don't get is trying to make everyone else either good or evil based on whether or not they agree with you. And in the last question we talked about, about the girl whose mom had given her a list of stuff, I forgot to touch on this during that question, but it's interesting, you know, that she's like, we're like sisters, we're so close. And I think it's really true that when people feel like they have discovered something, whether it's a diet that works or religion that works or just some sort of life hack, they got to tell everyone they are evangelical, do keto diet, Become a Buddhist, blah, 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 blah. Do CrossFit. Fucking CrossFit, man, right? And so I wonder if maybe that was fueling some of like her mom's directives. Like, hey, look at what I've discovered about myself. Because they are like, she was a young mom. So she's probably still discovering a lot of things about herself. And she wants to like pass that on to her daughter because that gives her some sense of control and validates her idea that her discoveries are correct. It's like, if I can convert someone else, then I'm right. And so then I don't have to doubt my own decisions. I don't have to doubt this direction of my life that I'm going in. I don't have to doubt that I became a missionary and moved to Myanmar because I'm converting all these people. So clearly I'm right. That's awesome. So in, if you look at it through that filter, what Ellen's dad is doing here makes, I guess, a little bit more sense, you know? I also do get the need to make sense of something incomprehensible, like the possibility of death. He's latching onto this religion because to him, he's glimpsed the other side or become very aware of his own mortality. And this is his way of gaining some kind of control over that inevitability. And who doesn't want that? Who wants to think, oh God, I'm going to die and you know, whatever. Like, no, we as humans, we want answers. And again, especially now with this disease that's going on. And for this man, he's had a very specific health scare, you know, and doctors can dial it. Oh, it was just a scare. Hey. When you're the one going through it, fuck. I had surgery like last month and I was like, never again. I was terrified and there wasn't even really anything wrong. But I was like, this is, I am close to death. Jesus be in the room with me. It was very scary. So like, you, I, I get it. So maybe approach a conversation with him from that standpoint. Daddy, I understand your health care was truly upsetting in an existential way. And I'm so thankful you found something that brings you peace. Because no one wants to take that away from you. Truly, none of us do. But it's taking me away from you. When you do X, Y, and Z, I feel A, B, C. And I don't want your spiritual peace to come at the expense of our relationship, the relationship with your daughter. Do you? Do you think God truly wants that? If not, let's find some common ground or at least a list of things that, okay, maybe we just don't agree on and we just avoid talking about it. Just negotiation. Then you got to delineate what those two or three things might be. Let your brother fight his own battles over the baptism. He might not even care that much, you know? Focus on your relationship with your dad. Maybe go back to some activities you guys loved as a kid. Fishing or camping or doing puzzles or whatever. Things that remind him who he is. Because health scares and this like fear of mortality, it takes away your sense of control over your own life. And it and therefore it erodes your sense of identity. Who, who am I? I'm no one. I'm a speck on this earth and my life could end like this. Just like a like a match blowing out. Remind him that he is still a person on this earth, right? Put him in an environment where he feels emotionally at home and doesn't need to default to this rhetoric, which people often do in times of turmoil. Reduce the turmoil. And if you can't, truly, if nothing works, then you are allowed to say, you know what, dad, we have to limit our contact. I can't do Sunday dinner every week. I can't answer the phone if I know you're going to be ranting about Fox News or whatever. Whatever you have as your boundaries, but set them and figure them out and try to form things with your mom, just your mom, shopping trips, mani petties. Of course, they're a package deal, but hey, this might be a good exercise in deepening your individual bond with her. No one actually is a package deal. People are individuals. So tap into that individuality. This might be really hard on her too. So give her an ear. But at the end of the day, you have the divine animal right, the God given right 
to protect your peace. And sometimes that means limiting the influence of others. Well, that's it for this episode of Girl on Top. Thanks for being part of the Shalantourage. If you have a love question you need some help with, find me on my website, shalanlester.com, and be sure to connect with me on Instagram at shalanxo and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Stay sweet, stay savage. Stay savage.